Keturah, the idolatrous father of Abraham. According to the Bible, Terah was the father of Abraham. He is first mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter 11, between verses 24 and 32. In addition to being the father of Abraham, Terah was also the father of Nahor, Haran, and Sarai. Little is known about the history of Terah in the Bible. Almost no specific details about his biography are revealed. What is known is that Abraham's father's lineage goes back to Shem, son of Noah. Considering Shem's brief genealogy, it is possible to see that Terah's closest ancestors were Nahor and Sarek. In this sense, the biblical text says, And Sarek lived thirty years and begot Nahor. After he begot Nahor, Sarag lived two hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And Nahor lived twenty-nine years and begot Terah. In this video, you will understand everything that the Bible says about Terah, Abraham's idolatrous father. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, take this opportunity and subscribe now. Also, Make sure to turn on all notifications, leave your like and let's start the video. It is difficult to say for sure if Nahor was Terah's father and Sarag his grandfather. This is because Shem's genealogy in Genesis chapter 11 probably has gaps. It is possible to come to this conclusion by the fact that if this genealogy of Shem is considered exhaustive and chronological, Shem himself would have survived until the time of Abraham's death. So it is more likely that this genealogy where Terah is mentioned is only representative, that is, a genealogy that focuses only on the most important people of that lineage. In addition, the main objective of the writer of Genesis in recording Shem's genealogy was to introduce Abraham's story which emphasizes the formation of the people of Israel and also highlights the messianic lineage. The Bible does not mention the name of Terah's wife nor does it clarify if Abraham's father had more than one wife or concubines. But it is certain that Terah had children with more than one woman, since later on the Bible informs that Sarah, Abraham's wife, was also his half-sister on the father's side. In other words, Abraham's father was also the father of Sarah, who at the time was still called Sarai. Therefore, it is also possible that Abraham's father had other children who are not mentioned in the Bible because they were not relevant to the story. The fact that Terah's son and daughter, Abraham and Sarai, married each other must be understood in the context of the time when this type of parental relationship had not yet been expressly forbidden by God. This only happened in the time of Moses, as recorded in Leviticus chapter 18, between verses 6 and 18. In addition, at that time Terah's family adopted idolatrous customs. This means that knowledge about God had not been preserved in the branch of his lineage. The truth is that after the flood, humanity soon rebelled against the Lord's will again, as recorded in the Bible in the episode involving the Tower of Babel. The male children mentioned in the Bible are presented in the following order, Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Many scholars consider that even with this order it is not possible to determine with precision if Abraham was Terah's eldest son. In fact, some interpreters argue that perhaps Haran, Abraham's brother and Lot's father who died before the family migrated northward, may have been Terah's firstborn. In any case, the Bible informs us that at seventy years old Terah had already begotten Abraham Nahor and Haran. What else can we know about Terah's life? According to Genesis 11, Terah was originally from Ur of the Chaldeans. Ur was a large and prosperous city-state in Mesopotamia, 
which is now southern Iraq. The Chaldeans, who no longer exist, predate Israel. These are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begot Lot. Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his kindred, in Ur of the Chaldeans, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 11 between verses 27 and 28. The name Ur comes from light or fire, probably descriptive of its idolatrous worship of fire common in the land. The city also paid homage to the moon god Sin. Terah, along with other Israelite ancestors, adopted pagan practices. The Bible says that he migrated with his family from the city of Ur northward towards Canaan. But after traveling approximately 800 kilometers the family settled for a period in the city of Haran. In Terah's time, both Haran and Ur were places of worship to the Sumerian moon god. In addition, the book of Joshua informs us that Terah was an idolater. In Joshua chapter 24 verse 2, we read, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and worshipped other gods. This fact was reaffirmed in the decision that the Israelites of Joshua's time were invited to make. Between verses 14 and 15 of the same chapter 24 of the book of Joshua, we read Joshua's call to the people of Israel, now fear the Lord and serve Him with integrity and faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord does not please you, choose today whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. When Joshua mentioned the gods that their ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, he was referring to the gods worshipped by Terah's family. This information reinforces the fact that God sovereignly called Abraham out of paganism to reveal himself and establish a covenant with him and his descendants. This is also made clear still in the same chapter of Joshua where in verse 3 we read, But I took your father Abraham from beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. But in light of this information, was Abraham's father, Terah, converted to the true God? Some commentators suggest that it is possible that Abraham's father became a worshipper of the Lord considering the fact that Abraham's religious experience was the basis for his father's family's migration from idolatrous U.R. of the Chaldeans. But the question is that after leaving U.R., Abraham's father's family stopped in Haran, another polytheistic city. So it is very difficult to conclude anything in this sense. In addition to the brief references to him in the Old Testament, Terah is also mentioned in the New Testament in Jesus' genealogy as well as indirectly cited in the preaching of Deacon Stephen in Acts chapter 7 between verses 2 and 5 where the biblical text says, He said, Brothers and fathers, listen, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran and said to him, Leave your country and your relatives and go to a land that I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And from there, after his father died, after his father's death, God brought Abraham to this land where you now live. Haran, which means road or crossroads, served as a commercial city between Arabia and Syria in northern Mesopotamia. Abram would have traveled along the Euphrates to reach Canaan instead of crossing the desert with his large group of people and animals. Terah's son Haran, not to be confused with the city of Haran, died in Ur. Lot, 
son of Haran, grandson of Turah and nephew of Abraham, became a well-known biblical character in later chapters. Turah led the important migration from southeast U.R. Turah took Abram his son and Lot son of Haran his grandson and Sarai his daughter-in-law wife of his son Abram and they went out together from U.R. of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, but when they came to Haran they settled there, Genesis chapter 11 verse 31. As the Bible reports they stopped before reaching Canaan. After his father's death, God brought Abraham to this land where you now live. God did not grant him any inheritance here, not even space for a foot. But he promised that he and after him his descendants would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no children. Finally, the book of Genesis says that Turah lived 205 years and died in Haran. This is what we read in Genesis chapter 11 verse 32. And it was after Turah's death that Abraham departed for Canaan. And that is all we can know about the story of Turah, Abraham's father, according to the Bible. Thank you for watching and following our channel. Don't forget to like, share, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Your feedback is always appreciated and helps me create more content that you will enjoy. God bless you.